So far, we've made a Stroop task and used slide states to expand our experiment. But what if we want a separate practice block? Furthermore, what if we want the subjects to keep doing a practice block until they reach a certain accuracy? We can do this with a new object called the inline object, which uses actual computer code. This will require learning a lot of new terms, especially if you're new to programming. But don't be discouraged. If you find that it goes too fast, there's a link to a blog post down below that explains these concepts more in depth. And if you don't understand it the first time, I recommend re-watching the video and then going to the blog. So if you're ready, let's get started. First, let's create two main divisions of our experiment, a practice block and an experimental block. Let's copy the Stroop list by right-clicking on it, clicking copy, and pasting it onto the experimental timeline. This creates a new object, Stroop list 1, which contains copies of all the other objects with one appended to them. All of the properties have been copied, only the names have been changed. Let's change the names by prepending the word EXP to the front to signalize that these are experimental trials. Let's also delete the feedback display object from the experimental timeline. Create another set of instructions after the instructions object and call it practice instructions. To save time from having to set the properties, for example, white text on a black background, you can copy and paste a text object that already has those properties, move it, and then rename it. In the text box, type, now you will do some practice trials. You will get feedback after each trial about your accuracy and reaction time. Press spacebar to begin. Create a similar instructions object before the experimental trials called EXP instructions. In the text box, type, we will now do the experimental trials. They are the same as the practice trials, but you will not receive feedback. Press spacebar to continue. We now have a practice block and an experimental block, and the flow of our experiment is clear and concise. However, in the beginning, we mentioned that we wanted only those participants who performed at a certain level, and for them to continue doing the practice trials until they reached that level. Let's say that we want them to complete at least 10 practice trials and to have at least 80% accuracy in the practice block. Let's call this kind of thinking conditional. If the subject meets certain criteria, then something will happen. In this case, they get to go on to the experimental block. To translate this conditional thinking into code, we need to use an inline object. An inline object introduces us to eBasic, the programming language underlying eProime. If you've used Visual Basic in something like Excel, it's very similar. If you have no coding background at all, don't worry. We're simply translating logical statements into a different kind of syntax than you're used to. As with any language, the more you study it, and the more you use it, the more fluent you will become. Click and drag an inline object after the Stroop feedback object. Call this object Calc Accuracy. If you open it up, it's blank. It's waiting for us to write code. Type an apostrophe, which means to write a comment. Anything written after an apostrophe won't be interpreted as code, so we can write whatever we want. In this case, it's useful to write comments that explain what the code does, or that act as a kind of pseudocode, that we want to translate into actual code. In this case, the inline script is being processed after a practice trial is completed. The subject made a response and got feedback. According to our criteria, we want to check whether the trial number is at least 10 and whether the average accuracy is at least 80%. If both those conditions are met, then exit the practice list and proceed to the experimental trials. Write all of that down in whatever way makes the most sense to you. Notice that, to test whether these conditions are met, we will need to create variables. Variables are similar to the list attributes we talked about before. They can take on different values and be used in different parts of the experiment. In this case, we will need two variables. One to keep track of how many trials there have been so far, and one to keep track of the total accuracy. After 10 trials, we can divide the accuracy count by the number of trials and see whether it is greater than 80%. 
But how do we create these variables in the first place? You will need to create or declare them in the user script and then set their initial values or initialize them. These are two different steps. To declare the variables, open up the script window by clicking on View and then Script. Alternatively, press and hold Alt and then 5. To declare a variable, type DIM, then the variable name, then AS, and then the data type. The variable name can be whatever you want. For example, if you type dim trial IDX as integer, this means to create a variable called trial IDX and to make it an integer data type, meaning that it can store a whole number. We can do a similar thing for our total accuracy variable. For example, dim total ACC as double. The double data type is able to store numbers with decimal places, which is useful for variables that contain averages. Now let's initialize the variables. Create another inline object before the Stroop counterbalance list object. It is good practice to initialize your variables at the very beginning of the experiment, before anything else runs. Using the same variables we just declared, set them both equal to zero, since we want them to start at zero. Now open up calc accuracy and insert some code to update the variables as trials are completed. For example, the line trial IDX equals trial IDX plus one will increase the trial IDX variable by one after the completion of each trial. We can do something similar with the total ACC variable by adding the total ACC variable to the slide accuracy on each trial. But how do we get the slide accuracy? Remember that objects have both methods and properties and that these can be accessed by typing the object name, then a dot, then the name of the attribute or method that we want to use. To use this, type total ACC equals total ACC plus stroopslide.acc. We now have the information we need to translate our conditional statement into code. We will use an if else statement, one of the most common statements in programming. Type the following. If trial IDX greater than equal to 10 and total ACC divided by trial IDX greater than 0 0.80, then Stroop list dot terminate and if. This is simply a translation of our pseudocode into actual code. The Stroop list dot terminate means to exit the Stroop list object if the above conditionals are met. Other methods for this object can be found by opening up help, eBasic help, and then searching for the list object. Lastly, we need to redo the practice trials if the subjects completed the practice block, but their accuracy was less than 80%. To do this, add another inline object after the practice block and call it check for redo. Enter the following code. If total ACC divided by trial IDX less than 0 0.80, then practice instructions.txt equals we will redo some practice trials. Press spacebar to continue. Trial IDX equals 0. Total ACC equals 0. Stroopfeedback.accstats.reset. Go to redo practice. And if. This code will be discussed in the blog post in the link down below. However, for now, just focus on the go to redo practice line. The go to command means to go to a label object, which we need to create. Click and drag a label object to just before the practice instructions object and rename it redo practice. Labels don't have any properties that we can manipulate. They are simply markers that other lines of code will point to. In this case, if we determine that the subject's accuracy isn't high enough, then the experiment will jump back to the practice block and redo it. This loop will continue until the subject's accuracy is above 80%. Now run the experiment and see what this looks like. We see new instructions about the practice block, and if our accuracy is too low, we redo the practice block. We keep doing this until our accuracy is better, and then move on to the experimental trials. We've covered many new topics in this video, including eBasic, 
the programming language of E-Prime. Knowing how to use these tools will give you much greater power and flexibility in designing your experiment. In the next video, we'll cover how to use the output of E-Prime to test whether there's differences between your conditions. See you then.